the Memfo wrestling wanted me to ask you about your run with Eric Embry as the invading Texas bunch, as well as any uh, memories of Steve Austin from those days. Yeah, um, Eric, I, I got along with fine. Uh, I knew where he was at. Uh, he 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 would go to a place and figure out in the first three weeks if he was going to be able to get in the office, if he's going to be able to do what he wanted to do or not. And in Memphis, Jerry Jarrett had confidence in him. Uh, so he came in, and I, I was not one of Eric's guys right off the bat. I, I had been brought in from... Uh, I, th I think Dundee at this time or whoever it was. Um, I'm not sure how I got there on this occasion, but it wasn't Eric who called me in, but we soon found out that we had more in common than we, than not. And, um, so that, that worked out in my case because it was, it was a place to go and be involved. And, uh, at, at that time, uh, figure out that I was going to be working with Jeff Jarrett <clears throat> And uh, that would put me in that spot. So it was a good spot to be in. And that's where I met Austin as well. And uh, you, you could tell Steve had that look and he had the attitude. It was just a matter of having that opportunity. And he, he had everything going for him uh, and had a top guy stamped pretty much uh, on him. but. He he needed to uh, just be in that, have that vehicle to to go th through with it and, and follow through. And eventually he did. But um, we, we talked and he said this before, uh, you know, I was riding in the car with him and Brian Lee one time. And I um, asked him, I asked Brian first, why are you primetime Brian Lee? What What is what is primetime Brian Lee? Then I looked at Steve and said, and you, who is stunning Steve Austin? This is when he had the blonde hair and the robe and the white uh, wrestling boots. Um, okay. He, he was, he was, he looked the part. He was credible. He was authentic beer drinking redneck from, from Texas, but stunning Steve Austin. Uh, it wasn't, it, it didn't fit. And then when he went to WWE, of course, everybody knows the story by watching the documentary, and that's, you know, the, about the killer and drink your tea, it'll get stone cold. And um, that, and that's really the way characters are developed or personas happen just by getting an inspiration somehow. And I, I, I this is another thing in wrestling class, you know, watch movies, listen to music, observe people, see things that, that you can take and make your own and. Uh, I'm reading. I'm reading right now, actually, during this uh, quarantine time, the the Andy Kaufman book, Andy Kaufman Revealed by Bob Zamuda. And this guy, that's exactly what this guy did. And he loved professional wrestling, and he he, but he used that those elements. He was not a comedian. He was a live performance artist, whatever you want to call it. But he but he enjoyed making people uncomfortable. He enjoyed being in on the con. That was the deal. And that was uh, the old school way back then. Um, you, you heard something. You saw something. You said, wow, let me take that and make it my own. And that's, that's what Steve did. And how in the world can anybody wear black boots, black knee pads, black trunks, and a black vest, a bald head, a goat a beard and, and mustache. How How's that going to get over? Because he feels it, because it's that persona, because it's real, because it's authentic. He is connecting with the crowd. He's communicating. And that was what Steve was. He wasn't missing it. He just needed to know what lane to put it in. And once he got there, man, he hit the gas and he never stopped. Have you tried any of his beer yet? No, I have not. Is it good? I it's not available in Canada. That's why uh, I was asking you. He should no, send no, no, no. It up to his buddy. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't tried the beer yet, but uh, I should. Yeah. And I'd recommend people to listen to the episode of you on his podcast. I heard that. I think it came out last year. 
it was really good. Well, thank you, Steve. Uh, uh, Steve, Steve uh, knows what life's about. He's lived it. And, and the good thing about him is he realizes it's a work. It's all a work. No matter how much success you have, no matter how, how famous you got, it's the same thing with guys like rock and rock in Austin. And I think even I'll, I'll throw Roman Reigns in there too. Um, they're the same guys that they were from the beginning in, in one sense, you know, they're different by all means. Yes. But they still know, and they still remember, uh, where they came from and what it was like. So not everybody does, but those guys do because they know what, what it means. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.